Oh, hello again. Can you guess what this is? What do you think? It's a hat? Or maybe it's a flashlight? No. Actually, it's a model of a lighthouse. See, a lot of times they put lighthouses on small islands so ships wouldn't bump into them in the dark or when they couldn't see very well on foggy days. The light would just sit there and flash its light and sound its horn. Stay away. We have our very own lighthouse out on Woolies Island. But there are a lot of people who live here on the big harbor that have decided that what we need is a fancy new lighthouse. There's a harbor down the way that has one. I don't know. What do you think? Do we need a fancy new lighthouse? I'm not so sure. It's like they say, you know, what's good for the goose is not always good for the gander. Our friend Theodore found out about that, too. One day not so long ago when he got just a little too big for his bumpers. Now, that was quite a story. Theodore was always dreaming of what it would be like when he got his special V-word. To be a V meant a tug had learned enough to leave the harbor and go across the ocean, all alone, pulling ships all over the world. Emily had her V-word and had been to sea many times. Now, Emily's V-word is vigorous, and vigorous means that she's a good worker. Theodore waited while Emily moved a big ship. See, she had promised to help him practice being a puller when she was finished. There are many things tugs must learn before they get their V-word, and pulling is one of the most important. As soon as Emily was finished working, the two tugs set off together for Willie's Island. Willie's Island, it's a small island in the middle of the harbor with a, a lighthouse on it named Lily. It was the perfect place for practicing. Lots of turns and bends. Let's pretend we're far away at sea, said Theodore, on a, on a, on a big job. I know just the place, said Emily. Let's pretend Willie's Island is Spain. Spain is very far away, all the way across the ocean. Any pirates there, wondered Theodore. Maybe, replied Emily. But if they ask you any questions, just say, si, si. That means yes, yes in Spanish. See, Theodore just loved to hear words from faraway places. I wish I could visit them too, he said. You will, Theodore, said Emily. When you get your V, then I'll go to C. C, C, said Theodore. Well, Theodore and Emily then went on and pretended Emily's lifeboat was really a giant oil tanker. Now, the first thing to do when you pull a ship is tie your tow rope onto it so you can guide it through the harbor. Uh, that, that's called buttoning on. The puller is always the first to button on. It's, it's really the most dangerous part of tug work because a ship entering the harbor is always moving. You have to cruise along with the ship at exactly the same speed. Then ease yourself beside it very, very gently. It's important not to make a bump. That can hurt the ship and the tug. Theodore had been practicing a lot with Emily. With Emily helping to keep it nice and steady, Theodore came alongside the boat and tied his tow rope on. <laughs> it seemed as easy as can be. Well, this isn't hard, said Theodore, as long as we work together, added Emily. Now, Theodore had only buttoned onto Emily's lifeboat, of course, but he said, Emily, I think I'm ready to button on by myself to a real ship. Well, Emily wasn't so sure about that, but she agreed to ask one of the pilots. Theodore tooted excitedly to Lily. Look at me, Theodore the V. <laughs> Lily gave a toot of her own with her foghorn as the tug sailed past. Later that day, Theodore and Emily set off to practice some more. That was when they heard a loud vroom, vroom. They knew right away what it was. George, he was puffing up smoke and vrooming his big double engines. George rescued an oil tanker, announced Hank. It weighed over 100,000 tons, added Fodok. George had just returned from rescuing a giant oil tanker on the ocean, and he was telling the other tugs all about it. And every time he got to an important part of the story, he vroomed his engines, you know, just to make sure everyone was paying close attention. The oil tanker was bigger than a thousand whales stuck together, said George. Her name was Aria. 
and she had a broken rudder. I, I rescued her all by myself. With a few other tugs, added Hank. Theodore, interrupted Emily. Are we going to practice? Later, replied Theodore. See, he wanted to hear more about George's great adventure. How did you button on? asked Theodore. First, said George, I turned up both my engines all the way. Theodore, said Emily, but Theodore didn't hear her over George's engines. Then I went straight towards her. At the very last second, roared George, I turned sideways and glided into position. That's the way to button onto a ship like that. Even one as tall as 300 walruses, one on top of each other. I wish I was like George, said Hank. Then I could be a V2 and meet lots of giant ships out on the ocean. Then Theodore told Hank that soon he would get his V word. I've been practicing with Emily, and she thinks I might be ready to button on by myself. Right, Emily? Emily? Well, that's strange, said Theodore. I thought we were going to practice some more. The next day, the sky and the sea were as blue as can be. The tugs were having their morning work meeting. The dispatcher told Emily and Theodore that they were to bring in a cargo ship named Kirby. Theodore could barely contain his excitement. This might be his big chance. He tooted to Emily. Can I button on first, Emily? He said. Well, replied Emily, I suppose I could ask Pearl, the pilot boat, if you could at least try. Has he practiced enough? Asked Pearl. Well, Emily really wasn't sure that Theodore had practiced enough. I'm ready, said Theodore, hopefully. Pearl thought about it. Well, she said finally, it's a clear day, calm seas. Then she turned so Theodore would be sure to hear and said, be extra careful and extra slow. We will, agreed Emily. Theodore gave his happiest whistle. He was going to button on for the first time in the big harbor. Later, Emily, Pearl, and Theodore were heading out to meet Kirby. Kirby had sailed all the way from England, across the Western Ocean with a big load of telephone poles, and was looking forward to a rest in a nice, quiet dock. Kirby's never been to our harbor before, Pearl was saying to Emily. And I hear he's a nervous ship. Remember to be careful. Yes, ma'am, said Emily. We will. Theodore buttons on, trumpeted Theodore as he hurried to catch up with Emily. I'll be a V for sure. Theodore gazed out hopefully toward the cargo ship lost in thought. Let's see, what should it be? Maybe it, uh, maybe it could be Theodore the Vinegar. No. The vacuum cleaner? Mm. Theodore, said Emily, remember to let me keep Kirby nice and still, and then you button on, just like we practiced. I know, replied Theodore quickly. I know. But Theodore was so excited, he broomed his engine just like George. Theodore the Vroom, he said. That's me. Theodore? Emily called, but Theodore didn't hear her over his roaming engine. Well, when Kirby, who really was a rather nervous ship, saw the strange tugboat rooming and zooming towards him, he thought it meant to bump right into him. Emily blew her emergency whistle. Well, there was only one thing for Kirby to do. He threw his engines into reverse to back up out of the harbor as fast as he could. But he couldn't avoid the little tug who seemed to be on a, a collision course for him. Theodore, watch where you're going, said Pearl. At the very last second, Theodore spun around sideways towards Kirby. Why, why aren't I slowing down, like George does? Well, luckily, Theodore only nudged Kirby a little bit. But poor Kirby was so frightened, he groaned a terrible groan, and some of his telephone poles rattled overboard right into the harbor. The only good thing about that nudge, I guess, was well, it got Kirby going, and he headed out to sea, and it looked as if he meant to sail all the way back to England. Emily caught up to Theodore. Why did you do that, she said. Well, that's how George does it, he said. Pearl had to chase after Kirby. 
And after a great deal of explaining, she was able to convince him that the big harbor was a lot safer than it seemed. Fodak took over for Theodore and helped bring Kirby in with Emily. One whale stuck together, said Theodore to himself miserably. That's all I'll ever get to button on to again. George, who was resting up from his rescue mission, was surprised to see Theodore returning to his dock. I thought you were moving a cargo ship, he said. Oh, well, said Theodore, I didn't, I, I mean, I did, just not exactly in the right direction. Theodore explained about Kirby and the telephone poles and everything. I went in straight, just like you, and then I turned sideways, but I couldn't slow down. Then George told Theodore that he only buttoned on that way in emergencies. And besides, said George, I have extra special engines so I can go in any direction I want. You know, like a helicopter, even sideways. Yours can't do that. Well, when Theodore heard that, <laughs> he felt very foolish. Now everyone was upset with him. A little bit later, Emily returned from taking Kirby into his dock. Theodore came floating up to her. Emily, he said, are you still angry with me? Emily frowned and said, Pearl says it's my fault because I said you'd been practicing, but it looked to her like you hadn't. I guess I wanted to do it like George, said Theodore. Theodore looked hopefully at Emily, but Emily still looked quite upset. Now, I know I should have buttoned on the way you showed me, admitted Theodore. I'll never get to go across the ocean now. Right, Emily? George is bigger and stronger than you, replied Emily. You can't button on like he does. I'm sorry, Emily, said Theodore. I need to practice and learn some more. I, I think I can do it if we work together. Will you help me, Emily? Just then, they noticed one of Kirby's telephone poles floating in the water. Well, that reminded Theodore of what had happened with Kirby, and that made him feel even worse. I still think you're ready to button on, said Emily quietly. Well, Theodore was quite surprised. You do, he said. Really? Sure, replied Emily. To Kirby's telephone poles, you can take them back to him. And apologize to Kirby, said Theodore. And with that, he set off after the poles. Maybe afterwards, called Emily, we can go practice again on Willie's Island. Theodore smiled the biggest, sunniest smile at Emily. CC, he said. Well, Theodore and Emily went to Woolies Island many times after that. It really became one of their favorite places. And one day soon, I'm sure Theodore will get another chance to button on, and I'll bet you he'll do a bang-up job. <laughs> I mean, he'll do a really good job. Anyway, thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. In the meantime, I'm going to figure out something to do with this lighthouse. Now, try this. What do you think? I kind of like it. <laughs>